Good morning and welcome to Gary's Graveyard. Gramblings. Let's, I'll tell you what, as we're in, actually, do you know, I've always described this part of my setting as being the north side. And then I suddenly realised it's silly o'clock in the morning here in the village and the sun is rising here above the private sector of the graveyard. You know, the bit where you've got money, but sadly everyone forgets it, and then you end up with cobwebs all over your gate and crumbling concrete or crumbling stone. But the sun there, so that surely must mean, at this time in the morning, that we're actually facing east, which means that the church itself must be east-west. <laughs> That's about as interesting as paint drying, isn't it? Let's say, I tell you what, let's make up for it by saying good morning to Mr and Mrs Owl. There they are. And I'm going to wax a little bit dangerous and say a close-up good morning to Count Dracula under there. And even Mr Mole, who's built a fresh molehill in front of us as we nip round to my usual spot and my little propping bit to say good morning to John Gilbert. <laughs> Hello. Oh, I might need to just, oh, that's a little, that was a little bit cack handed, wasn't it? So good morning and welcome to the village. And I should say this morning, there's a definite nip in the air. And because we're now in meteorological autumn, it being the 5th of September, uh, September. And so we're past summer, summer's at it. But today is gonna to be a scorcher apparently, we're going to get an Indian summer. Now there was a famous Steptoe and Son gag about that, which I can't do for obvious reasons because I'd end up being censored. Just another one of those gags. You know, I'm always telling you about gags that I can't tell. I've always liked that Steptoe and Son one. I, I thought it was very, anyway, anyway that's neither here nor there. So this morning, the mists were swirling around my blackberries. There was dew on my cobnuts, and there are spiders' webs around my ear holes. It's a beautiful morning here, and um, in fact, even oh no, the sun hasn't quite crept round at the moment to the shields of the rich above me, but it no, no doubt will do. None of which has anything to do with the subject of today's gramblings, which is the end of the world. Now, though you might think, you might be thinking to yourself, now that's not a very cheerful subject for the first thing uh, at the beginning of an autumn. But uh, bear with me, because there's method behind my madness. The other day, the wife and I were watching this dreadful um, uh, disaster movie on. Um, but I think it, the channel's called Blaze, funnily enough. And um, it was something like Asteroid Ageddon. You know, it's one of those movies that when I look at it and I think, how could I possibly not have been cast in movies as bad as this? Um, you know, there's something wrong in the world when I can't even get a part in a movie like that. I can't even get a part in Hollyoaks, let's, let's be honest. <laughs> but anyway, but anyway. Um, you never know what the future might bring, do you? The phone might ring, which would be a miracle because I've had it disconnected. But um, anyway, so and in this film, it's got every cliche in the book for the sort of disaster movie where uh, there's this great huge lump of asteroid the size of Stoke-on-Trent, which is heading towards Earth, ready to obliterate it. And then you get loads of world politicians shouting at each other and arguing, no change there. You get um, thick military generals who want to fire nuclear missiles at everything and miss. Um, you end up with um, a bloke, a sort of muscly bloke with a T-shirt, not unlike mine, I should say, casting directors, please take note, um, driving a 4x4 around American dirt tracks in the, in, out in Idaho somewhere. Um, um, no, it can't be Idaho because there's no mountains in Idaho, is there? Keith, will you please correct me if I'm wrong on that? Um, uh, so, yeah, OK, so they're driving this four by four looking for their kids who are somewhere out camping and they don't know where they are. Duh. 
and there's a dog at home that's been left. So all of that sets the scene for this enormous lump of rock coming down and destroying mankind and the planet and everything as we know it. So um, I was watching that and it was pretty terrible and laughable. And, and, um, and then it got me to thinking, because this could happen. You know, this could happen at any minute. I could be, but this whole video blog could be obliterated by something huge from outer space. And I was thinking, well, if that is to be our end, firstly, I'm not going to know very much about it because it'll be quick. And secondly, um, what bits of this, because it, remember this rock that's coming in the size of stoke on Trent is going to be obliterated by missiles fired at the wrong place by the military. So there's going to be, it, instead of one big thing just coming down and obliterating one part, uh, of a, presumably the part where the kids are camping and there's a dog in the house, um, because they fired this missile at it, it shatters into hundreds of pieces um, ready to spread the death and destruction around the earth. So I was thinking, <clears throat> where would I most like these bits to drop? I mean, some of them are obvious, aren't they? Trump, Putin, Kim Jong-un, um, Rishi Sunak's Conservative government. Um, all of them disasters, and all of them which deserve to have a large lump of space rock dropped on them from a great height. Um, Maidstone in Kent, I wouldn't be averse to that, being obliterated by a large lump of something, because it is. Have you been there? Oh. Um, what else? Uh, well, you can probably think of things that you'd like to have. Oh, my neighbours, that woman who lives next door to me. You know, as long as it misses the dogs, no, the dog, because, you know, you have to save the dog. You have to, isn't it, does it not strike you as funny in these films that they put a pet in deliberately to get the heartstrings going? Say, oh, this poor little dog. While in fact, humanity, ooh, humanity is about to be wiped out in its entirety, including the dog and everything else. So it is a bit silly, but then it's not Shakespeare, is it? How the hell did I get onto that? I can't think. Um, no, it's the, the, the mood has eluded me. But anyway, um, do you know what? This, I, do you know what? I think my goosebumps have got goosebumps this morning. I zoom in on them, but I don't want to frighten you before you've had your breakfast. So, yes, end of the world, casting directors, Mr and Mrs Owl, cobwebs on the... Actually, I, when I finish this grambling today, I'm going to take you back over to the... Um, to the rich part of the cemetery because I've just noticed it's all cobwebby and dewy and I'll try and get a close-up of that as I close off by saying, Michael, oh, have a lovely day, by the way, everybody, and uh, watch out for those mists around your blackberries and if you get dew on your cob nuts, make sure you wipe them off before you scrunch them. Have a lovely day and salute.